Here was a big L last oh. week. The state of Idaho failed to execute a man who was all out of pardons and appeals mm-hmm. and stuff. He's one of the longest running death row inmates in the United States and the longest running inmate in the state of Idaho. Okay, his, wow. His name is Thomas Eugene Creech, mm-hmm. and he murdered a bunch of people 50 years ago, as I understand it. A, a bunch being like all in one event? Well, or? so he like confessed to a whole bunch, but they definitely got him on two. Or okay. according to the New York Times article, thank you, Kevin, it was five. But this was all 50 years ago. Okay. And he was scheduled to be executed by lethal injection last week. Three doctors attempted a total of eight times uh-huh. to find a vein, and they just couldn't. Oh, crud. Now- Maybe he had one of those really rolly veins. As someone who's had to draw blood before, those are a real bitch. <laughs> I know, yeah. And I know one of my arms when I give blood is easier to poke than the other. Mm-hmm. But my point is, isn't there like a jugular vein? Like, isn't there like I a mean, main vein you can- like, I don't know what they were trying to do IVs maybe on the back of his hands like they do. So uh, usually you go for the elbow first. Okay. okay. Um, if that doesn't work, then you can go to the back of the hand. Um, I'm trying to think of... Those were the only two I ever had to poke, but I was in clinical research, so I didn't really do that much poking. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I think... Well, <laughs> I was going to say, I think jugular is a little too dangerous, but considering what we're doing... <laughs> considering the end goal... Right. But also the training would have been lacking because they don't train people to do that. I don't know if you're a phlebotomist is a phlebotomist. Are they not? Yeah. But I mean, as someone who's had to draw blood before, there are just easier places on the body to get blood out of. But this isn't even drawing. Couldn't they just go needle to the neck? Well, no, because I think I saw that in a movie once. Well, but that could be intramuscular. So if it's a sedative or something, then that's fine. But where it's, a lethal injection, you want that to be intravenous because then it's going to travel to the heart. The whole point of lethal injection is that it's as painless as you can get. And I do want to make it clear I'm against inhumane treatment for prisoners or prisoners of war or right. whatever. But the end goal is to do this guy in. Right. And here's what I don't understand. Like, why didn't they have a firing squad on backup? Because last year, due to apparently a... um limited supply of lethal injection drugs, Mm -hmm. Governor Brad Little brought the firing squad back, made it legal again. You know. So that's what we need to do. You're not totally wrong. And one thing that is nice about the firing squad, for the sake of those who are doing the firing, is that they load all but one of their bullets with blanks. Yes, correct. There's only one real bullet. So you don't know if you're the guy who did it or not. You can go to bed at night with a clean conscience. Yeah. Knowing that, you know. Not knowing that you were the one who did it. Well, yeah. Knowing that you only had a one in five chance. Right. Of being the guy and, okay. deliver, and you know, delivering that. Mm-hmm. And also knowing 50 years of taxpayer money going to feed and house this guy. Here's the thing. I have... I don't care about money at the end of the day. I know you're against the no, death penalty. That's the thing. I'm not okay. fully. I think that there are certain crimes that do deserve death. Like realistically, if you're like a child molester or a murderer or something heinous like that, that has no place in society. I do think that those crimes do deserve death. And I recognize that our justice system is biased and that our methods of gathering evidence are imperfect. Like the, yeah, like Mm -hmm. the wrongful conviction and incarceration for nearly 20 years. Of Chris Tapp. Of our buddy Christopher Tapp. Exactly. And we just found out last week too that that was, that it is now being. His autopsy ruled it a definite homicide. Blunt force trauma to the back of the head. Mm Mm-hmm. I told you so. Right. So that's my Excuse only point. Excuse me. Is if there is no doubt, no, not even um, no, okay, I know there's a legal term. Beyond no, a reasonable doubt. Not even no reasonable doubt, but no doubt, period, then sure, then death penalty is fine. But yeah. there have been so many people who have been sentenced to death only to be exonerated later. And I just think that is too flawed of a system to rely on. And I agree. 
I just the guys like confessed <clears throat> to the things at this point. Ah, but and I mean, there's coerced confession. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm just saying we've spent five, count right. them, five decades going through this. Pretty right. sure we've got it figured out now. Basically, if they have enough evidence to them, I think it's totally fine. For example, Lori Vallow. She definitely did it. We all know she did it. There was no hiding that she did it. Anyone with less evidence than that, I might be a little bit more hesitant to say definitely the death penalty. Lori, though, deserves it. Right. Yep. Okay, Idaho Department of Corrections, let's just get it done. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else feel that way? And you know what? Probably this poor guy feels that way, too. I mean, after all that time, yeah. I mean, he's got to be like, what, 70? At this point, he might not even make it to the next time that they want to execute him. I'm just jealous that he got to have two last meals. <laughs> Kidding. It's kind of messed up. It's dark. I wonder what it was. We uh. should find out. Another follow-up. <laughs> 